class. Can I welcome everybody to the first morning meeting of Cabinet? In, yeah. Welcome to everybody. Good to see uh, so much interest. Uh, and happy New Year to everybody. Um, so I'll go straight into the uh, agenda. I've just recorded Andrew Blackman's apologies. He's just uh, not able to be with us this morning. Um, so we'll just go on to item one, which is Members Code of Conduct. Do any members of the cabinet wish to declare any interests? Um, Phil, I'm not sure what I do with uh, the first one, the age and milestone strategy, just because I'm employed in the age UK. So I don't know, it just seems to be limited. Just, just, okay, it's a personal interest. Okay. Okay, fine. Anybody else? No. Okay. So item two are the minutes of the last meeting. Can we agree I'll sign as a true record? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. takes us then on to um, leaders update. Item 3, executive key decisions taken under delegated powers. And you'll see there's, there's one there that we're reporting, um, cabinet member relation and culture. We just need to, to note that um, decision. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Okay, so on to our, one of our main items this morning. That's item 4, the uh, Rural Plan 2020 Vision un Underpinning Strategies. This is the Aging Well in Wirral uh, Strategy. So I'm going to ask um, Chris Jones, Cabinet Member for Adult Care and Public Health, to introduce this, please, Chris. Thank you, Phil. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to, to bring uh, the Aging Well in Wirral Strategy to Cabinet. Um, a first of its kind for Wirral, this real partnership strategy has been produced in um, response to the Wirral 2020 plan. Um, and we particularly wanted one which would concentrate on older people. And we're talking here about 50 plus. So everybody's, uh, most people are involved in that. Um, and we just wanted to see how we could improve the lives of older people in, in Wirral. Older people are a real asset. Um, their skills, experience and knowledge provides invaluable and often life-changing um, support to communities and residents every day. This strategy is about making sure that older res residents are recognised for the contribution they make in the knowledge that services in Wirral are ready to provide a joint effective service to help them whenever they need it. And the number of people who have sat around the table in this um, older people's strategy it, it is, is really good. We've had voluntary sector, we've had health, We've had um, council, public health, it's just been really, really good. Um, so the importance of the strategy is highlighted through the fact that there are currently around 132,000 people in Wirral who are over 50, and that's 41.2 percent, which is almost half our residents. Uh, in 2015, one in five people is aged over 65. And by 2030, it's going to increase to one in four. So this is a really important group of people that we need to, to uh, support. And while life expectancy has increased over the last few decades, to 82 for women and 78 for men, the average number of years that people can expect to live in good health is about 20 years younger. So we're talking about people with really chronic conditions who have spent the last 20 years of their lives in ill health, really. Um, so the, the uh, strategy is being led by Annette Roberts, who's the Chief Executive of course of the Community Action Bureau. So the voluntary sector have taken the, the lead in this one. Um, and everybody from community and faith sectors, everyone has been involved in shaping the, the development of the strategy. And it's a fantastic example of what can be achieved in partnership. The strategy and its priorities, if you look at the uh, strategy, is based on evidence that it exists and a range of insights, including the resident survey that we've had and just done. It's been subject to extensive consultation with residents, organisations and other stakeholders. And people who came to the group went back and, and consulted their own, their own groups, um, which, which was really great. So, um, and we had a really good stakeholder event in the to uh, gather a range of these. So the important 
bit is now working in partnership to implement the strategy um, and the actions that we've outlined in order that we can collectively work together to fundamentally transform and improve how we can support older people. And I'd particularly like to thank two of our officers, so Lucy Barrow and, and Rebecca Hickenbaugh, um, who have really worked hard with us right the way through and have uh, pushed the, um, the strategy forward. And the comms team will put it together because I think it's a really easy read, well put together document, and I hope people will read it and get involved. And I'd be very happy if Cabinet would approve the strategy. Thanks very much, uh, Chris. Um, I'll say one or two words, but does anybody, any other members of the cabinet wish to say anything about this? Bertha? Um, I'd just like to say that this is, because I, I, because I work in this environment, um, I, I can relate to this report, and it's an excellent report, and it underpins the importance of looking after people over the age of 50. As you say, there's a, a, a massive not just the fact that they're the aging population, they have an awful lot to offer the world as well in all spheres of life. And I think we need to embrace and, and support and appreciate our elder people because um, they, they bring a lot to the world. In, no matter what the pledges is, no matter what we're talking about, elder people have a lot to offer. And I think this um, report, this, this underpins everything that we need to do. Yes. Okay, and, and congratulations again to one of all involved in 
the production of this document. Great, okay, so that then takes us to the, um, another important uh, plan, the World Growth Plan, um, uh, which uh, uh, again is a key strategy for us going forward. So I'm going to ask uh, Pat Hackett, Cabinet Member, uh, to take us through this, please, Pat. Thank you very much, Jim. Um, first of all, I'm going to say how excited I am to be presenting this report, uh, this plan to Cabinet today. Uh, never in the time uh, in this realm, certainly as the lead member for economy, uh, the <coughs> first thing, as well had such a focused plan to share new places, support business, and upskill our residents. I never shared, can I say, as in said, with such clarity. As I say, I'm immensely proud to be leading on this area for Council and taking this forward. Well, the key tools chair for driving growth, of course, will be the Royal Waters Investment Fund. We are one of only a handful of enterprise zones in the country that is implementing a commercial investment approach to kickstart investments. <coughs> this end, Wirral has the opportunity to be a real pioneer in driving growth in this way. Of course, um, in Birkenhead Town Centre, as we heard on the radio today, we have major plans to revitalise uh, the area. Uh, it's retail, uh, particularly by bringing major international uh, and national brands to the town bringing new leisure uh, schemes, hotels, restaurants and housing, and linking up, which, we, which has always been a priority, Woodside, Hampton Square and the town centre to make it a bustling, and thriving destination. Most important, actually, that's been an ambition for quite a while, and it's one I think we will achieve with this plan. Work is already underway, of course, with our partners, with the Royal Chamber of Commerce, who are implementing a bid, a business improvement district, to bring business growth and the potential, of course, for Birkenhead is immense. It's crying out for investments and we're going to deliver it. We are determined, Chair, as well, that 2016 will be the year of starting to deliver. A plan, of course, for growth uh, is critical to the deli delivery of the 20, of Wirral's 2020 plan. <coughs> the backbone of that plan is to give the people of Wirral uh, a better life chances, as well as driving economic and housing growth, the whole strategy is designed to improve the quality of life, of course, enable higher incomes, reduce deprivation, and perhaps more importantly of all, raise the aspirations of the young people to bring them job opportunities. Already our target pledge of 5,000 by 2020 is being reached, with the number of business startups, of schemes and projects already started, which I haven't mentioned in the previous cabinet. We take, for instance, um, the contact centre and the Royal Met College already up and running with the jobs created there at the start of the Royal Water Scheme. We've got on the A41 next to Camel Lairds, Turbine Park and the light box uh, in the maritime sector. They're, they've created hundreds and hundreds of jobs. So we're well on our way to that 5,000 target of, uh, by, by 2020. As I say, Chair, also in, in the forward, Wirral really does stand uh, on the threshold of a new area in its economic history. And, you know, and, and I really mean that, I generally mean that. Uh, and this plan is critical to ensure that we, uh, Wirral Council and its partners, are able to take advantage of the significant opportunities now coming our way. Of course, Chair, it's not a plan that just belongs to the Council. As we know, it's a partnership strategy and it recognises the real importance of working across the whole of the Wirral and indeed the Liverpool city region to deliver it. The Chamber of Commerce, Mersey Maritime, the LEP will all help us deliver our, our ambition as voices uh, of the private sector. The plan chair also is a, re a recognition that we need to work with our businesses to support them to grow. We also need to attract new investments and get behind those key business se sectors that have the potential to grow. Well, the waters, of course, as I mentioned, the International Golf Resort and the, and the Birkenhead Town Centre, of course, are all big ticket regeneration schemes. But there will be other important growth sectors delivered uh, all across the borough in our local shopping centres, for instance, where we have a range of action plans. Liscard, for instance, has plans already drawn up. Business parks uh, and within the visit, visitor and leisure economy, like the Elmwater in Brighton, which has gone from strength to strength of the initial investment of £70 million. Camel has become once more a leading force within the maritime sector uh, and, and 
in attracting new investment, securing new, new contracts, um, that we all should be proud of. Unilever has invested £50 million into a new advanced manufacturing facility at Port Sunlight. These global successes are here, Chair, on our doorstep. We need, of course, to understand our places, our businesses and our people to deliver this strategy. I sit on the City Region Employment and Skills Board and improving our position in relation to youth employment is extremely important to me and joining up all our initiatives on the banner of the growth plan will be a key priority of mine moving forward. Generating employment opportunities and supporting people into these jobs is a critical part there say, of that strategy. Um, we also want to work, of course, with developers and guide what we want and where. We will do this by master planning and building a narrative around our key development areas to attract the very best developers and businesses to the world. This is an important change, I think, from, from old. We're actually looking at master planning areas and selling ourselves uh, and putting a narrative around it to developers. Because, you know, if we're going to exploit that potential, let's do the properly, let's get out there and let's sell ourselves because the, the opportunities for that are immense and the services that will bring in all the sectors Chris and my colleague just talked about now are a huge, absolutely huge that we can attract that massive development in, in, into, into the world which we are doing and which we will continue to do We also of course, Chair, need to work with our city region partners to ensure that the devolution agreement works as you know with the city region and by ensuring the world gets its fair share to drive those investments opportunities uh, and finally, delivering the strategy will certainly enable Wirral to become the most exciting area within the Northern Powerhouse. The City Region agenda will feature Wirral heavily and the sheer scale of ambition and our projects, I say, will catch the attention of government. Just to finish, on that note, I'd like to, Chair, recommend uh, to partners uh, uh, and hope that it will give its full support to the growth of our plan and that we do all we can to ensure it's and world's future success. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Joe. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Pat. Um, again, I just wanted to just sort of build on, on personally build on some of the comments that Pat's made. I mean, I think this is this again, like like the last strategy, the last item is, is incredibly important for us. And um, you know, I've been saying for a while that 2016 does need to be the year of delivery. Uh, these schemes, um, and I'm confident that, that, that we will get that. Um, you know, I think from the council's point of view, and again, Pat, you said this: that this is this is not something we can do on our own. But what we can do is we can, you know, as I think we are, show leadership on this agenda by, by setting out the vision for where we want to take the borough over the next five years and beyond that, actually. Um, and I think we are doing that, and we can, you know, we can bring the key partners, the key players together around the table, whether that be the the, um, the chamber, the investors, the developers. Uh, we can do that, and I, I certainly, you know, I've certainly not known um, such a positive, uh, um, you know, mood music in terms of people actively wanting to invest in Will. And, and you've mentioned some of the opportunities. We'll we'll kind of go over them again, but. Um, uh, you know, Birkenhead, I think, is a huge opportunity uh, to bring significant investment and jobs into the area, and that will benefit. That will benefit the world. It will create jobs for our, our local residents, and you know, again, we need to make sure we've got. We're working with the schools and the colleges to give them the skills, give local people the skills to get those jobs. So that's a key part of the strategy as well. But it'll also help us because if we're bringing in more businesses, uh, if we're if we're building more houses. That will uh, create more income for, for the council in terms of council tax, new homes bonus, business rates. That will help our to us to deliver good quality services. So it's a it's a real kind of win win. Um, and as you say, Pat, we have got already I think a really good track record on regeneration. Uh, I know you never missed the opportunity to mention New Brighton, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's 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 been done in New Brighton is is nothing short of I mean, miraculous in terms of turning around uh, the prospects of, of that area of the world, and if we can replicate that in Birkenhead and elsewhere, that would be fantastic. And as we know, we're working with Neptune um, on our on the Birkenhead Town Centre. 
Um, we also starting, I think, from a, a, a really good base. I mean, we've got the fastest growing small business sector in, in the whole of England. Uh, our growth rates uh, are fantastic in terms of businesses. Um, so I, I think we've got some really good uh, foundations of, uh, uh, which, we, which we can build on. And, and, and it's important also to mention the um, devolution deal in all of this, because that gives us, for the first time, an opportunity to, to really direct funding in areas like skills and housing and planning and infrastructure and transport. All of these things are key to attracting businesses. And, you know, I've, I've got a, a, you know, an opportunity to play a part in that because I'll be leading up the economic development portfolio in the city region cabinet. So I think all of the, the building blocks are in place to really make some major, major progress on this in, in, in 2016. And I, and I think um, I'm, I'm really excited about um, uh, you know, the future in terms of, of what's set out in the growth, growth plan. But as with the ageing well strategy, it's now delivery. Delivery is absolutely key. And you'll hear me say a lot about this a lot about these strategies. But I, I do think it, you know the the the, um, the platform is there for us to really um, move forward on this. So um, that's really all I wanted to to add to this. Any other cabinet members want to say anything on the growth plan? Stuart.
Thanks, Adrian. And just to, to add to that, clearly, you know, I'm quite proud of the fact that this Labour Council was one of the first councils to adopt the living wage for its um, uh, workforce. Uh, I think we're um, keeping faith with that commitment by agreeing to find the 84,000, which, you know, is not um, an inconsiderable sum in the context of some very difficult budget decisions that have to be making soon. But I think this is, you know, morally the right thing to do, so I'm, I'm pleased to uh, to see that we're endorsing that. I, I suppose the only thing I, I would add is, is a plea to <coughs> other organisations in rural, other employers to follow suit. Now I know you know it's it's difficult for some um, for some businesses and for some other organisations, but um, you know I'd like to see a situation where um, in the not too distant future all employers in rural are paying their staff the living wage. And I think, again, it's about the council set, setting the, the tone, if you like, uh, exercising leadership and, and that's on this agenda, and I think that's what we're doing. So, uh, uh, the recommendation um, is before you, um, that we uh, introduce the revised national living wage rate, 825 per hour from the 1st of April. Uh, Adrian, you've explained the, the, the reasons behind that. And we um, we need to recommend this to council, um, the pay policy to council. That goes to the next council meeting, so you know, yeah, in March. So uh, is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, thank you very much. Not been notified of any other any other business. So can I thank you for your attendance and close the meeting? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.